taking these mushrooms from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use three of the mushrooms. I'm going to use my white chalk paint by Waverly and I'm going to paint all the mushrooms in the color white. And I'm going to let those sit and dry and I'm going to take this close from Dollar Tree and you're going to remove the sticker. And after that sticker is removed, you want to take these uh, moss balls also from Dollar Tree and I think I used five of them total and I'm just trying to figure out if they're going to fit correctly and then I'm just going to glue them all down try to keep like the four of them on the bottom and then kind of put one on top of all four of those and then next after that paint has dried I'm taking ink by Waverly and I'm just painting a ring around the top of that mushroom and then without any more paint on that brush I'm gonna drag the paint down to make it even lighter you want like another ring not as dark then I'm taking a gray paint and I'm just going to put that in the middle of the ring and then wipe my brush off and I'm going to fade that paint into the black paint you want it to fade nicely. You want the colors to fade nicely into each other. Just like that. Yep. Then I'm taking my Crafter Square metallic marker and I'm going to just draw little polka dots all over these mushrooms. Then I'm just trying to figure out where I want my mushrooms positioned. I'm going to put two on top of that uh, moss ball and then the third one's going to kind of sit on top of the other two mushrooms. So I'm just taking my hot glue, I'm gluing them, the two down to the moss ball. And then taking that third mushroom and putting the hot glue underneath the mushroom cap and then setting it on top of those two mushrooms so you can see it from above. Kind of how mushrooms would grow, I assume. That's how you see it in pictures, usually. And then that's it, it's so easy go so good with my witch apothecary theme this year and I just love how inexpensive it was I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial I hope you have inspiration to recreate it and thanks again enjoy your day for this spell book I'm taking a Dollar Tree book and there was a sticker that framed these stickers and I took that and I placed it on the book. Next I'm going to take these two stickers also from Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue them down to the sides of the book. You could try to just stick them on there but they didn't, weren't sticking very well so I just hot glued them just to be safe. Then I'm going to take these four stickers and put those on the four sides of the book of the front or on the front of the book, I should say. Then I'm taking a Dollar Tree plastic spider and I'm just gluing them down to the book. I used two of those spiders. And then I'm measuring lines to create a um, spider web on the front of the book. So you're just going to make a horizontal line, a vertical line, and then you're going to make diagonal lines. And then once you have that done, you're just going to start making little like swoopy lines like that. I don't know how to explain it. Like swoops? Yeah. Uh, you just want it to look like a spider web. And it's not perfect, but listen, it's a spell book. I mean, they're not perfect, right? They're like scary and messy and used and worn and old so it's okay what it looks like and obviously spider webs aren't always perfect either 
Next, I'm going to just take that hot glue and go over all the lines that I had drawn for the spider web. And I end up making extra lines or extra, um, extra swoops of the web, I guess you would call it. I don't know what it's called. You guys, help me out. Swoops? I'm not sure. I mean, it sounds good. You can see what I'm doing, though. And then I just felt like it needed a little more, so I went in some, with some extra lines that I didn't originally draw. And then I'm taking these little bones. I did paint them white for a different project last year, but I'm reusing them and I'm just going to uh, place them down with hot glue. And I used four of those on each corner of the book. Then I'm taking my ink paint by Waverly and I'm just giving this a good coat of paint on the front, the back, the sides. And I do a little bit of the inside so you can't see that red of the book. And I'm painting everything. Then I'm going to take my Mud Brown by Dixie Belle and I'm just going to place that on the corners of the book there over that little sticker and then I'm going to paint it, paint the bones and the spiders with the uh, Mud Brown and I'm going to paint uh, the stickers that are on the side of the book too. And then I'm going to go in with my Rub and Buff in Antique Gold, and I'm going to go over that spider web. Um, you can try to get just the spider web. It's kind of hard to not miss the book, so it's okay. It gives it that spooky look. I don't mind that I got some paint on the book, or of this um, Antique Gold on the book. kind of makes it look more spookier. And then I'm just doing like a little over that uh, sticker again. Just placing it anywhere that I think would look good. And then I'm taking some water and this antique wax by Waverly. I'm going to mix it together. And then I'm going to give the book pages a coat of this um, watered down wax so the pages look old. And then here I'm just kind of crinkling the pages because like I said, you want this to look old like it's been around for a long time. So just crinkle them really well, kind of just pushing down on them while they're wet. <clears throat> Excuse me just pushing down on them while they're wet so this way they'll kind of stay that way when they dry see and then when you close the book it looks like it's been used thousands of times which is pretty cool and then that's the end of this tutorial another really easy tutorial um, didn't take me long at all to recreate or to create this. Everything was Dollar Tree that I used besides the paints, so definitely inexpensive. And you know, you can say I made this. Look how cool it is. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this video, and I hope you get some inspiration from this video. 
And oh yeah, right there's my Hocus Pocus book. All right, guys, enjoy your day. Okay, guys, so here's another really easy DIY. I'm taking this Harvest Blessing signs from Dollar Tree, and I'm removing the Harvest Blessings um, piece off of it and I'm going to remove the twine hanger and then struggle to remove that paper off the sign as we all know how difficult it is to remove the paper I just wish it was as easy as the target signs it just peels right off but you know I think this probably took the longest was peeling this paper off the sign Uh, once that's removed, I'm taking my ink uh, chalk paint by Waverly, and I gave it one good coat. I think that's about all it needed was one coat of paint because it's so opaque. And let that dry. And then when it's all dry, I went in with this uh, metallic marker from uh, Dollar Tree, and I lost some of the footage, but I took a roller for any of the straight lines, and then the rest I just freehand and I just did a border around the outside of the sign. I would have loved to have uh, cut one off a Cricut but I couldn't find one that would fit this sign exactly so freehand it was and it didn't turn out too bad. And I think I did go over the marker about three times. Like it needed three coats of that marker paint. And then next I did cut this um, stencil out from Cricut and I did create this stencil I couldn't find one I really like so I just created my own I'm going in with folk arts winter white paint and I'm going to give that like a distressed coat of paint I don't want to fill in the words or the letters completely I want it to look a little more distressed so I'm just going in with a light hand I know it doesn't look light but I promise it is because I kind of just don't fill it in all the way. I leave some of it, like some of the uh, letters still black because I want it to look rustic or antique or distressed, whatever the word would be. I hear I'm showing you right now. See how I didn't fill it in perfectly. You can see where some of the parts are whiter than others, where I put more paint down. That's um, gonna make it look more distressed. And then I'm just removing that stencil. And then when I'm all done weeding this uh, stencil and removing it, that's the end of the project. It was super easy. I think the hardest part was creating the stencil on Cricut, but it was really fun to create. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and following this tutorial. I hope you get some inspiration from it. And I appreciate everybody who watches. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay, so another Halloween sign. I'm taking this frame from Dollar Tree, removing that rose, and I'm going to remove this sign from the frame. I'm going to remove that paper, which this gave me a really hard time. I mean, it was really, I had to use my Cricut scraper to get the paper off, which I eventually got majority, not really, you can see, I didn't get majority of it off, but anyways. I just painted right over that with the white by Waverly and I think I did about three coats because it took quite a few coats. Um, I did paint the front and back of the sign because I wasn't sure which side was going to look the best. On the back of the sign I filled in those two holes with um, wood filler 
but I ended up liking the front of the sign better, which was weird because there's only two little holes on the back of the sign. But that's okay, I used the front of the sign. And now we've got a finished piece because both signs, both sides are painted. And then here I created another sign on Cricut and I cut it out on stencil paper. And I'm just gonna weed out all the letters and then I'm going to get my transfer tape and just transfer that um, stencil to the tape and transfer that to my sign. I'm sure you guys all know how to do this by now, or a majority of you do. If you don't, let me know. I can make a video about it. Anyways, I created this Sanderson's Apothecary Shop. And, um, yeah, oh, well, here I am. I'm a little ahead of myself, but I am placing down my transfer tape. Just getting that on there. Make sure you get those letters really well. You want to get inside the letters, like the O's, the D, the A's. And then just removing that and placing it on my sign. Now I'm just going to remove that transfer tape so we can start painting and I'm going to take ink by Waverly and I'm just going to fill in that stencil. Okay and for the border I am not doing a perfect paint job around that border I want to leave some of the white left on there because I'm going to go in with Burnt Sienna by Folk Art and I'm going to paint in what I left um, unpainted and it's going to give it like a rust like effect when that paint dries it looks like rust it's really neat And then I also go over um, some of the wording too, or the letters with that burnt sienna. Um, not perfectly, just like a couple little paint, paint dabs here, little paint dabs there. Um, you'll see it right now. You can see that I'm just like going over the letters very lightly, just to give it that rustic or rusted look. And then I'm going to remove my stencil, and this is my favorite part. Look how nice and crisp those letters look. I love it. I just love it. That's so rewarding. Okay, and then now I'm going to go in and I'm going to sand this frame down because it has some kind of coating on it that when you put paint on it, it just beads right off. So I want to do a really good sanding of this frame. And then I'm going to go in with Antique Wax by Waverly, and I'm going to give it a heavy um, coat of this wax. I'm not going to wipe the wax off because that will give it a lighter um, color. That will make it a lighter color. I'm just going to leave that wax on and let it dry. And then after that's all dried, you put the sign back in the frame, and it is all finished. I also forgot to tell you that on the front of the frame, I took that uh, burnt sienna, and I made the um, like rustic little spots on the front of the sign. I don't have any footage of it, but I just took a little brush and painted it on there just so you guys um, know what I did for that. So I'm starting off with these two wood dowels from Michaels and I'm just finding the center. You only need to cut one in half, so I'm grabbing my miter shears, cutting that in half, and then the other one we can keep whole. Um, I'm going to grab some water and some ink by Waverly and I'm going to mix those two together to form a black stain. Now 
Then I'm just measuring out to make sure that my cauldrons are going to fit inside of those uh, pieces that I cut. And I'm actually using um, the St. Patrick's Day cauldrons that I had left over from this year because I could not find Halloween cauldrons. Anyways, so I'm going to take my uh, stain that I made and I'm going to stain all of the wood pieces. Then just take a paper towel and just um, dry the excess stain off of that. And then this uh, wood piece is from Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. And I am just uh, applying the stain to that as well and doing the same thing, just rubbing the excess off with a paper towel. Then next I'm going to take this White Wax by Waverly and I'm just going to apply it to my cauldrons. Um, I'm just going to uh, dab this uh, wax on there and then take a paper towel and wipe it away and continue to do that until I get um, the distressed look that I want. Really, I just don't want it to be so shiny. I want it more of a matte color, so that's why I applied that wax. And next, I'm just finding the center of that um, bigger board or wood piece from Dollar Tree and I'm just marking with my roller the center of the ends of it so we can hot glue our wood dowels onto that piece of wood. And then you're going to take the longer dowel and you're going to glue that right on top of the two dowels that we just glued down. Then next, I'm going to take some twine, and I'm not measuring the twine, it doesn't matter how long the pieces are, but I'm going to make a loop through the um, handle of the cauldron. So you just want to make a loop, tie those ends together, pull it real tight, and then I'm just going to cut the extra string off at the end of that knot. Then we're going to take that loop and we're going to go underneath the handle of the cauldron, pull it through, and then you're going to take the knot and you're going to go over the handle and underneath the loop. And then you just want to pull it tight. And that'll keep your uh, twine secure on that handle. If I had uh, chains or little S hooks, that would be even better, but I didn't have any of that on hand. so. I just made do with what I had. So again, uh, you're just cutting the twine. You're going to knot the end of it when you make a loop with it. Just gonna knot that right there. Pull it as tight as possible. You will pull it tight. There we go. I just want to make sure both ends were out. Okay, so yeah, I'm pulling it really tight. Then I'm cutting that extra string off at the end of the knot. Then you're going to take that loop. You're going to go underneath the handle. And then you're going to take the knot, go over the handle. And then go through that loop. And then pull the knot upwards. It's really easy. Once you get the hang of it, it's like, wow, okay, that's super easy. This, I really enjoyed doing this DIY because I have um, a witch theme for Halloween in my house this year. So it looks so cute uh, with all my decor. 
and I saw these all over uh, the internet, like um, Amazon and Grand and Road, and they just wanted a lot of money for them. So this is a great alternative. Okay, and here um, I'm just hot gluing that cauldron to the top of the dowel. And like I said, that's why we didn't have to measure our twine because I'm just eyeballing how low I want my cauldron to hang and I'm just going to hot glue it on there. And I will have extra twine left over, so I'm just going to cut that right off. For me, you can't see the back of my uh, cauldrons or the back of this piece, so it's no big deal that uh, there's a little extra left over. And then I'm just doing the same thing with the other two. I'm just going to eyeball them and um, hang them from the dowel. And that's it. This is uh, the end of the DIY. It was really easy to make. Next year I might try it with a chain because I think it'll look a lot cuter and we'll have to see but for now this is this was so much fun to make. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I hope you get some inspiration from it and thank you for watching. Alright, so this tray um, was inspiration from Target's Halloween tray uh, from their BP section this year that I was unable to get my hands on. And I'm just taking these uh, snakes that I got from Spirit Halloween. They came in a pack of like 10 and I grabbed two that were similar to each other or I think they're pretty much the same snakes. Grabbed two of those and I'm using a Dollar Tree tray and I am hot gluing those snakes down. and. Just to save you a headache, do not hot glue the snakes down. Just use super glue to start with because you're going to save yourself so much trouble. I must have forgot, which I know I didn't forget, that metal and hot glue do not mix together. But for some reason, I just like to put myself through this and hot glue it and then have to do it all over again. So yeah, just start with the super glue to begin with. And I'm just... Uh, gluing them down to act as handles to a tray. Of course, I'm not gonna use that as real handles, but that's what they are supposed to be. Then to paint the tray, I'm taking Ink by Waverly and I did three coats of this paint uh, front and back. Um, you want to do three coats on metal or at least two coats because it's going to leave a streak if not. So yep, once that was all painted and dried, I went in with my Robin Buff um, in Antique Gold and I'm just going over the top of the snakes with that uh, Antique Gold and I just love it. I love it. Like it just makes the whole project look so much more high-end I love that color like I it's so satisfying really it is and then just uh, doing the same thing to that other snake then I'm taking Waverly's clear wax and I love this stuff I used to use the polycrylic finish in matte, but I am so glad I discovered this. I always use the white wax and the antique wax, but this is a true matte. Like this wax will leave your projects matte, and that is what I wanted. And that is it. It is so simple, so easy, and yet it's it's a statement piece. I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this, and if you weren't able to get your hands on that Target tray, this is some inspiration for you. For this skeleton pumpkin, I'm taking three different kinds of skulls from Dollar Tree. For that um, 
the skull with the body, I'm just going to remove the plastic hanger from the top of the head and I'm going to remove the head or the skull from the body. And then when that's all done, you want to cut your skulls in half. Um, we only need the front of the skull, so you can just cut them in half and that'll be easier to set inside of our um, spackle when it's time. And then I do paint my skulls white, but you can really skip this step. It's not necessary. Uh, do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> and then I'm taking this Dollar Tree pumpkin and I just took a vase and drew a circle around it and I'm just gonna take a serrated kitchen knife and carve out that pumpkin. And then I took air dry clay to fill my pumpkin up because that is what I had the most of on hand. But you could use spackle, caulk, um, the expanding foam, anything that you have the most of on hand. You just want to fill that whole pumpkin in. Um, I definitely didn't mind the clay. It makes my piece real heavy. It feels like it was an expensive piece when you lift it up. And then I'm not filling it all the way to the top. I want to leave um, a little room for that uh, pumpkin. Then I'm going to paint the entire pumpkin in that ink by Waverly. And just let that dry. And then when it's all dry, I'm coming back in with uh, Dollar Tree Spackle. And I'm going to fill the rest of that pumpkin in um, to the edge of the pumpkin. You want to form it around the sides. I definitely like the spackle better than the caulk because the caulk is really sticky. Um, then I'm going in with my skulls and I'm just placing them inside that spackle. And you want to push that spackle around the skulls so when it dries, it keeps those skulls in place. Some of the skulls I had to cut down a little bit if I wanted to fit them in there. Um, like the, the one on the top, I had to cut his head down a little bit. And the one on the side, I had to cut, cut his face a little bit on the side, just so you can get it to fit. Now after this has dried, you can see that it's starting to lift up those skulls. So I'm going to take a little bit of caulk and I'm just going to go around any of the areas that started to lift up. And then when my uh, spackle had dried, the one skull kind of sunk down inside, so I'm just um, placing a new one inside of there. And now here we're going to take our white paint and we're just going to paint all the skulls in that spackle. Um, so that's why you didn't have to paint the skulls to begin with. And then I'm just taking a dry brush and I'm cleaning out all the uh, features on the skulls, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, um, just so you can see them better and there's no paint stuck inside of there. Then I'm going back in with that ink and I'm going to clean up the edges of the pumpkin. Um, you just want to try to get a straight line as possible. So you can see, um, yep, I'm just painting the edges of the pumpkin.
Okay, for this uh, DIY, I'm taking these little gift boxes. They're uh, casket shape from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna take my white paint by Waverly, and I'm just giving the outside of this casket a um, coat of paint. Just one coat is all it took. Then I'm gonna go in with my ink by Waverly and I'm gonna do a coat on the inside of the casket or gift box. Now that the um, outside of time to dry, I'm taking my antique wax and I'm going to apply that to the whole outside, everywhere where I painted it white, uh, just to give it that wood-like effect. And then when that's had time to dry, I'm going back in with my ink uh, paint and I'm just going to give the outside of the box a distressed coat of that black just to make it look more spooky and dark. Next, I'm going in with a generous amount of hot glue and this um, Spanish moss from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to place that inside of the gift box casket. Next, I'm taking one of these skeletons off this garland, and I'm just going to glue it to the inside of this gift box. So I'm gluing it back to the back of the um, gift box. And then I'm just gluing his feet down, and I'm going to glue his hands down as well, so he stays pretty well put. And then when that's all glued, that's the end of the DIY. It's super easy, it's affordable, and it looks adorable with your tear tray. Thank you guys for watching. So I'm starting off with this skull head from Dollar Tree and I'm taking my color plaster and I'm going to paint uh, that, I'm going to do two coats on the skull head with that color. Next I'm going to take this skewer and I'm just going to kind of like carve out any of the lines that are on the skull face. Um, just kind of picking that paint away basically. So I did all the lines, I did the teeth, the lips, the nose, anywhere that you had lines on that skull. Then next I'm taking this cloche that I got from Target. It was $10, but it is huge, so it's definitely a statement piece. It looks great with my decor this year. I'm going to take the white wax by Waverly, and I'm going to give the bottom of the cloche a distressed kind of look, or more of a matte look. So I'm just painting that um, wax on, and then I'm taking a paper towel, and I'm kind of wiping the excess away. And I just continue to do that until I get the look that I'm, I want. 
if you like the shiny look, you can totally skip this step and just, you know, save yourself some time. I just wanted it to look a little more matte and not so shiny and new. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the top of the cloche. I'm just painting on that wax, wiping it away, and continuing that, those steps a couple times until I get the desired look that I want. And then next I'm going to go in with a little bit of Spanish, well I'm going to go in with a lot of Spanish moss, a little bit of the reindeer moss from Dollar Tree, and here are some like, I, I think they're like bark clippings, or I'm not really sure but I think they come inside of some of the moss at Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna use a couple of pieces of that inside of the cloche. I'm gonna take a generous amount of hot glue, put that down on my cloche, and then I'm going to um, lay my Spanish moss on top of that. Then I'm gonna lay some of the reindeer moss on top of that as well. Then I'm going to also take a lot of hot glue for the skull head and I'm just going to place that right on top of that Spanish moss. And then here I'm just going to take some of those little clippings and I'm going to set them inside of there with some hot glue. Now I'm going to take this greenery from Dollar Tree and I do paint it um, black with my ink by Waverly. I'm just clipping some pieces off that I wanted inside of the cloche. And then here I'm taking that uh, black chalk paint and I do paint all of this but I only end up using one of these pieces <clears throat> excuse me I only end up using one of these pieces uh, of greenery inside of the actual cloche and then I'm taking this um, dried floral from Dollar Tree and you can see I added that little piece of greenery that I painted black in with that um, dried floral and I'm taking my hot glue gun and I'm just trying to glue those stems together or those yeah stems together so they stay um, as one piece so it'll be easier to put inside of the cloche but it doesn't work very well so then I do grab some twine and I glue that onto the stems and that definitely kept them together a lot better Now this was the tricky part, trying to get it to stand inside of the cloche. It wasn't an easy task. I kept hot gluing everything, trying to get it to stick. I made a little hole to put the uh, stems in and that didn't even help. So um, after all was said and done, I kind of just glued a piece of that dried floral to the skull's um, side of the head and that helped the floral to stand a lot better. I know it's really hard to see, but right here you can see that I'm adding a little glue to the side of the skull head, and then I'm just gonna press that um, dried floral right against it so it helps to stand up. And then that is the end of the DIY. Another really easy one, inexpensive. I mean, $10 for the cloche, a dollar for the head, and everything else I had on hand. So, I mean, I just love it. It looks so good. It's my statement piece on my um, table when you walk in my living room. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and get some inspiration from it. Thanks for watching. Bye.